aspects of the last football season brought to you by the United States Army and the National Football League. We're going to give you a close-up look at some of the teams and some of the plays and some of the players that kept millions of fans glued to their TV sets. You're going to see what makes football the great game it is. Superb individual effort, teamwork, spontaneous action, plus the ability to spot the breaks and take advantage of them. So make yourself comfortable, and let's go to the game. In Yankee Stadium during the 1971 season, New York Giant fans had had to endure a record of four wins and ten losses. But the 72 season brought new hope. Hope which sprung from the fact that there had been many changes made by head coach Alex Webster. An off-season trade with the Minnesota Vikings had brought quarterback Norm Sneed to the Giants and he was only one of many new starters. Number 72, Joe Tafoni, was new protection up front, as was Dick Enderley. On defense, Jack Gregory came in a trade. John Mendenhall was a rookie starter, and Pat Hughes became a starter at linebacker. Richmond Flowers moved into a starting role, as did number 45, Pete Athos, who was joined by number 43, veteran Spider Lockhart, and Willie Williams. Ron Hornsby and Jim Files were veteran but young linebackers, and Henry Reed was up front on defense. Willie Young, Greg Larson, and Doug Van Horn made a veteran offensive line, along with Bob Tucker, the Giants' record-setting tight end. Veteran receivers Don Herman and Rich Houston gave the offense some sparkle. Running back Charlie Evans gave it punch, and Ron Johnson, who had returned from injury, gave the offense an all-important game-breaker. And so it was that Coach Webster began the season with a blend of old and new faces, a team much changed by trades and changed by reserves who had won starting roles. And if no one knew exactly what to expect, one thing was sure. It was up to the 1972 New York Giants to become a contender. In my job, I fly a lot of American tourists to Europe. But you know, they always have one complaint. They wish they could spend more time there. But this time, my passengers won't have that complaint, because they're going to spend a full 16 months in Europe. They were the United States Army. Hello. Hello. Thank you. And they take taking advantage of the Army's brand new European enlistment option. If you enlist now for three years in armor, artillery, or infantry, and successfully complete a four-month training program. You're off to Europe for at least 16 months. See your nearest Army representative for further information about a complete tour of duty under the new European enlistment option. If you'd like to see Europe as few tourists do, today's Army wants to join you. Call 800-243-6000 toll-free for your nearest Army representative. On opening day in Detroit, the Giants came up with some big plays as Rocky Thompson rocketed 92 yards for a touchdown. But the offense just couldn't generate any heat when it came to putting a drive together. Mistakes and broken plays were costly and added up to a 30-16 loss. The Dallas Cowboys came to Yankee Stadium for the Giants' home opener. Norm Sneed and wide receiver Rich Houston went up top in a big way as they connected on five passes for 175 yards and two touchdowns. Houston's second score came on a 94-yard speed burner. But with the Cowboys holding the lead, the Giants couldn't come up with the one break they needed to turn it around. And 
Dallas went home with a 23-14 victory while the winless Giants pondered their problems. Then in Philadelphia, before a Monday night national television audience, the team began to gel. Every time the Eagles threatened, the defense cut them down. Meanwhile, the New York offense was cutting down some records as Ron Johnson scored four touchdowns for an all-time Giants mark. He also rushed for 124 yards and his combined running and receiving attempts total an NFL record 41. The 27-12 win was a big one, and it sent the Giants on their way. With New Orleans in town, the Giants had to stop the Saints quarterback, Archie Manning. Number 81, Jack Gregory, made Archie his personal quarry as he harassed and battered him, giving the defense 11 sacks for four games of the season. The constant harassment was intimidating, and Archie began to misfire. Number 24, rookie Chuck Crist came up with one big theft. Richmond Flowers' diving interception gave the Giants four for the day. And while Norm Sneed complimented the defense off the field, he also made it worth their while when the offense took over. He hooked up with Don Herman, who made a super scoring catch. Then it was number 27, Bob Grimm, another addition from the Viking trade. Then, off the bench, came the aging one, Joe Morrison, whose every appearance in a New York game set a record for most games played as a Giant. Joe's long gainer began what number 31, Charlie Evans, finished. Evans scored three big touchdowns as the Giants ran him up over the Saints 45-21. But even more importantly, both the offense and the defense had proved they were ready. And coming up was a very big game with the playoff bound 49ers. With two wins in a row, it was now time to find out if the Giants were for real. And the 49ers provided the test. Right from the start, the Giants special teams met the challenge with number 83, Tom Gatewood, and number 41, Willie Williams, doing the ball hawking. Although Willie's score did not count because the play was ruled dead, it did set up Ron Johnson's score, which was ruled good before the fumble. But the 49ers came back to tie the game at 10 apiece. On the next play, Rocky Thompson sped up field for 75 yards to set up a peak Gogolak field goal and a 13-10 giant margin. But again, San Francisco came back to regain the lead. Then the New York defense, led by number 75, Larry Jacobson, Jack Gregory, and number 71, Dave Tipton, smothered Brody and the 49er attack. Number 80, Henry Reed, and number 64, John Mendenhall, kept the pressure on, and finally, Brody broke. Late in the fourth quarter, Pete Athos intercepted. But now the Giants were fighting the clock and the 49ers. Six times Norm Sneed handed off to his runners. And six times they bowled goalward behind brilliant blocking. Then with 134 left, Charlie Evans sliced in to give the Giants their third win in a row, 
It was a pressure-packed victory that put them in contention in the NFC East and proved that this team was for real. In the sixth week of the season, the Giants came home to face the St. Louis Cardinals. In the first half, the Giants were sluggish, and St. Louis went ahead 21 to 7. The lone giant score by Charlie Evans wasn't enough to exactly keep the New York fans on the edge of their seats. But in the second half, the giant defense came out smoking. Taking his cue from the defense, Norm Sneed continued his NFC leading 66% accuracy. Giants 14, Cardinals 21. Then a great play by Spider Lockhart tied it up. It brought the giant faithful out of their seats. The New Yorkers continued to pour it on. All gears were meshing now and the Cardinals were about to go under. Twice, New York moved to within field goal range. And twice, Pete Gogolak connected. Giants 27, Cardinals 21. Then it was up to the defense. With their 18th sack of the season, equaling all of 1971, they wrapped up a great come from behind victory which put their streak at four. A streak that was due in great measure to a New York Giant defense that had gone out and knocked people down and would continue to do so throughout the season. In the seventh week, it was the Redskins, and for Coach Webster and the Giants, stopping Washington's Larry Brown meant a tie for first in the NFC East. But it was not to be, as a New York score was nullified by a penalty. Then came a controversial stolen ball play with the call favoring the Redskins who turned the play into six points for Larry Brown. Courageously, the Giants fought back as time ran down. But Bob Tucker's score came too late in a loss that put them two games behind in their division. Now every game was crucial if the Giants were to stay in contention. 
The Denver Broncos came to town and found a ball hawking defense that made the breaks for the high powered offense. Although early in the game, Charlie Evans was lost for the season, number 49, Joe Orduna, came in at fullback and played well out of position until Vince Clements was ready later in the season. Again, the defense was a swarming, relentless pack of tormentors that forced mistakes. Mistakes like this one that Jim Files turned into six points. Norm Sneed continued his great passing streak as his completion percentage stayed at 65. Ron Johnson put the finishing touches on the 29-17 victory. A big win for the Giants because the following week, it was to be the Redskins again. For the second time in three weeks, the Giants were faced with a must win over the Washington Redskins. And they came up with some big plays, such as the 77 yard kickoff return by number 18, Eldridge Small. Billy Kilmer, who had been sacked only six times all year, was dumped three times by the defense. But once again, the inches and the breaks went the other way, and so did the score as Washington triumphed 27-13. Still in contention for a wild card playoff spot, the Giants travel to St. Louis, where Ron Johnson did some traveling of his own, 123 yards on 22 tries. Bob Tucker set a club record with receptions in 33 consecutive games, and Norm Sneed kept firing right on the money as the Giants took a 13-7 lead. A new hitter emerged in number 51, linebacker John Douglas, who, with 58, Jim Files, led the defense as they stopped the Cardinals in an important short yardage situation that ended the game and put New York back on the right track. When the Philadelphia Eagles came to New York, they ran into an offensive dreadnought that chewed them up. Every aspect of the offense and special teams rolled with power. Number 29, Vince Clements, who came in the Minnesota trade, exploded on the New York scene. And the New York offense rolled on. Bob Tucker scored twice, and number 11, Randy Johnson, came in and hit Don Herman for two touchdowns. New York's 62-10 route was the most points ever scored by a Giants team.
The Giants were now in a must-win situation in Cincinnati. Only a victory would keep their playoff hopes alive. The Giants gave it their best shot as Ron Johnson raced for 119 yards to go over 1,000 yards for the season and to break his own club record. However, when the Giants couldn't score, Randy Johnson came in at quarterback and led the faltering offense on one touchdown drive. But in the closing minutes, as New York drove for the winning score, they were intercepted. A theft that cost them the game and ended their playoff hopes. getting a little tired of squeezing yourself into tiny cars with tiny engines, the time has come to start thinking big. Better yet, think enormous. Like 27 feet long, 12 feet wide, 52 and a half tons loaded. Power? A 750 horse, 12 cylinder air cooled engine and cross drive transmission are standard equipment. Gas mileage? At three gallons to the mile, it's not one of our best-selling features. Parking? Who's going to fight you for a spot? Choice of color? It only comes in one, but it does have a sunroof. If you've got the bug to move to something bigger, today's Army wants to join you. Call 800-243-6000 toll-free for your nearest Army representative. The undefeated Miami Dolphins visited Yankee Stadium in the 13th week of the season. And despite the fact that they were out of contention, the Giants never let down. Vince Clements continued to be a powerhouse runner as he gouged out tough yards. Norm Sneed and Bob Tucker continued as the Giants' top passing combination. At this time, Norm was second in passing in the NFC. Bob was second in receiving. Meanwhile, the offensive line of Joe Tafoni, Willie Young, Greg Larson, Doug Van Horn, and Dick Enderley kept Norm Sneed safe as he led the offense for a total of 352 yards against a vaunted Dolphin defense. The offensive line, which allowed only 10 sackings of Snead all year, a league low, twice opened huge holes and Ron Johnson glided through to score. But in key situations, the Giants and the ball were inches apart. Although the Dolphins came out ahead 23-13, they knew they'd been in a game with a team that deserved to be called a contender. New York went to Dallas to meet the playoff-bound Cowboys in the season's finale. And it was a day that should make every Giants fan look forward to 1973. Jack Gregory finished the season with 21 sacks, and the defense finished with 37, as opposed to the 18 in all of 1971. Number 56, Pat Hughes, intercepted one pass to add to Spider Lockhart's and Willie Williams' interceptions. As all the starting Giants defensive backs ended the season with four thefts apiece. Vince Clements blasted for over 100 yards as he and Larry Jacobson and Norm Sneed, all obtained in the trade with the Vikings, were standouts in the Giants' triumph over Dallas. It was a great ending to an unexpectedly good eight and six season. A win that promises much for the future. And so in 1972, the Giants had taken their best veterans,
sprinkle heavily with newcomers and come up with a winner. They'd come up with Norm Sneed, who finished first in the entire NFL in passing, and an offense that finished first overall in the NFC. Bob Tucker had another record-setting year and finished second in receiving in the NFC. The running game had flourished with Orduna, Charlie Evans, Ron Johnson, and rookie Vince Clements. The defense had come up with the big plays. As well as the big play, the defense had come up with the hitters. In 1972, the New York Giants had started as an unknown quantity. And in the end, they had fulfilled a promise. They had become a contender. The big win over Dallas in the last game points to an even brighter future for New York fans because in 1973, the Giants' goal won't be to become a contender. But instead, it will be to become a champion. When you see a game on TV or at the stadium, you see professional athletes being professionals. But you don't see the sweat and bruises in training, the self-discipline and the motivation that goes into the making of a team that can press on right to the end. You have to get it all together in any worthwhile effort, sports, business, or the United States Army. This is Pat Summerall saying so long for the United States Army and the National Football League. And thanks for the opportunity of bringing you this program.